And let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So on Friday and Saturday, uh, myself and some delegates from our church, delegates from all across our synod, gathered in Moorhead, as we do every year, to talk about the business of the, of the larger church, the directions that Jesus is calling us and the challenges that we face, where we're headed and how we're going to get there. This year, the, the theme for our assembly was risky business. It was risky business. As we celebrate and, and commemorate the 500th anniversary of the beginning of the, the Church Reformation and Martin Luther, Martin Luther left us with the, the wisdom that we must always be reforming, that, um, that the world is going to change around us, and that, and that, uh, that the thing that stays the same is God. And so, so it's a constant challenge for us to stay, stay on target with that. It's a challenge. And the challenge, I think, is summed up in Jesus' final words in Matthew 28. He says, Go and make disciples of all nations, and baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The close of Matthew's Gospel is a passage we usually refer to as the Great Commission. But the passage actually ends <clears throat> not with a commission, but with a promise. And I think sometimes we get so caught up in the grandeur and the import of that Great Commission, I do anyhow, that I overlook what I now think of as the Great Promise. The Great Promise is, I am always with you, even to the end of the age even to the end of the age. And I suspect it isn't an accident that following that great commission, we're left with a, with a great promise. Because a promise of Christ's presence with us following such a big uh, job that we're left with, I, I think that promise is, is necessary. It's necessary. It's necessary to know that God the Creator and, and Jesus the Son, who is our Redeemer, doesn't leave us alone, but, but leaves us with the Holy Spirit. And last week we talked about the Holy Spirit as the one who knits us together, right? Quilts us together is the way I think about it. And that's the job, and that's the work that we can be a part of. And we can be a part of it because Jesus promises that he does that work with us. And so it's my intention today to talk with you a little bit about the challenges that, that we face as a congregation in one of the very specific ways that we participate in that work of the Spirit, that keeping people knit together, keeping our community knit together, the work that we do to keep families knit together, and the way that Bethlehem Lutheran Church acts as a safety net, offering acute assistance right here and right now when people ask and they say they can't get around in their car and they've got no food to feed their families. And so you all made the decision years ago that you wanted to be part of hmm, part of holding families together. Right, part of holding the community together, and that you're going to do something different than I've ever seen happen at, at any churches that I've ever been a part of with your deacon's fund. These thousands of dollars a year that you all decide are going to go towards that safety net. $20 a pop for families who need food or gas. And not only that, but anybody who comes in asking for help is going to get time with a pastor and I can't tell you how many times somebody comes in and they ask for help with food or with gas, but there's actually an unspoken request behind that request. Because there are so many people who come in and you can tell that they haven't been regarded and that they haven't been regarded for a very long time. One of the very biggest blessings of, of my work here 
that you've called me to do is to be your representative for those people, with those people. I think that's so huge. And I can't tell you how many times and in how many ways I've seen a spark of life from people who walk into my office looking dead. And I think of that promise. Jesus says, I am always with you even to the end of the age. Like I said, I don't think it's an accident that he says that. I suspect that our only hope of fulfilling this great commission, sharing the good news of God's grace in Christ with the world through word and deed and welcoming all into fellowship through baptism, is by keeping in mind the great promise that Christ is with us. And we take careful to note the tense of Jesus' words. And this is, uh, this is you know, I, that, that's something that I kind of do normally, and it, and it drives my family nuts. I get down right to the nitty-gritty, and I, and I notice the tense, but I think it's important here. Jesus doesn't just say, I will always be with you even to the end of the age, or at a certain time I am going to be with you from the end of the age. He says, I am with you. To the end of the age, and that's present. That was present tense for those disciples, and it's present tense for us, and because of this fantastic ministry that you all do, it's a present reality for folks coming in here looking for a little bit of help and a little bit of time. Christ is with us, even now, even here, and when they come in, they know that. Even amidst our struggles at home or at work or our congregations or in the world, Christ is with us, encouraging us and comforting us working with us, guiding us, granting us grace and courage, the courage necessary to be the people of God in the world right now. And that's no easy task. It's no easy task because I've learned in my time here that there are plenty of people who don't sense that God is with them. Even worse, maybe those people who sense that God has abandoned them. And when I'm able to give them the help that you have given, you see glimmers that that's not true. <clears throat> do we sense God's presence? I don't know if we all do. I hope that we all do, and I pray that we all do. But I also know that there are dark times, and I can tell you this, that the people you allow me to help through the Deacon's Fund, they sense God's presence, and that's because of you. And I get to be in the middle of it just doing my job. And I'm thankful every day for the work of the Spirit that we are all bound together in this, right? And that's me, and that's you, and that's the people who come in asking for help. We're bound in this together. We're quilted together by God's Spirit. And that's a really important part of what promises do, I think. They bind us together. Right? They make us one. They provide hope and they create courage to live with one another and to support each other, to forgive each other and to encourage each other. And at the heart of every authentic and nurturing relationship, when you think about it, there is a promise. A promise that is a whole lot like Jesus' promise. I'll be with you. I am with you. You can count on me. I've got your back. Let's see what we can do, what we can do together. I've been reading a book lately about a woman who, um, who's dealt with mental illness all of her life and... Um, and the promises that she tells her children are so important, and I think, I think they're important for us today. She says, Be brave because you are a child of God. And be kind because everyone else is too. We belong to each other. And that's the truth, isn't it? We belong to each other. That's maybe the most foundational promise we need to cling to, but it's scary because we share. One of the bravest things that we do, in my estimation, is to give God room to do God's work. 
That means sometimes that it's work that we start, but we don't get to see the completion. That means that some of the gifts we give, we don't know how those gifts affect the ones who receive them. And the hard part for us, I believe, is trusting that God's going to do something good. Trusting that God is going to do something good. Our final hymn today is to be your presence. It's to be your presence is our, is our mission here. Lord, that's what we pray. And I've seen in so many ways how you have been God's presence. Last week, you know, you've seen the signs out that, that the deacon's fund is, is on hold until we can replenish those funds because we were scraping the bottom of that checking account for, for quite some time. And that's... I mean, I wish that wasn't the case because I think what it means is that there's probably more need in our community than, than there has been for a very long time. There's a lot of need out there. And they come here. And I guess what I'd like to do is to share a couple of the stories. I think that's really important, and that's maybe one of the things that I haven't done a good job of, is, is to share how how I've seen that those gifts have, have made a difference in the lives of the people who come and receive them. And I want to sh- promise you that they have made a difference. One of the things that we do is offer bus passes. It's ten rides on, on the Otter Express, and there's people who come in asking for those. And, um, and we give those out, you know, normally, like I said, $20 a pop is sort of the way that we help. And one of my most favorite things is... Um, is to know that the dollars that they receive, uh, they've got to stretch them, and sometimes they don't stretch far enough, and they come in and they ask for bus passes. And there's a group of people who, when they can, and it's about once a month, they'll bring in $20, and they'll say, you know, I, I want to I add this to the deacon's fund, and it's these same people who've received the bus passes. So we give them a $20 bus pass usually at the end of the month, and a week or so later, they bring in $20 to add back to the deacon's fund. They essentially, they're, they're, they're paying it forward. They're paying that gift forward. You, you've uh, made the opportunity for them to receive a bus pass, and they're making the opportunity for somebody else to receive that, and that, that does my heart so good. A lot of the people that come in asking for help are our families. A lot are mothers, and, um, and they're bringing their kids with them. They have their children with them, and they ask for, for diapers. And the dollars that you've given have uh, allowed me, one couple times a year now, I've, I've gone to Sam's Club, and I've stockpiled those crates of diapers that they sell at Sam's Club, um, because that's the cheapest place to get them, and they're the good diapers. And so when somebody comes in, and, they, and they've got their kid in, in dirty clothes, and they say, I just don't have any diapers, and I'm able to go downstairs and come back with a full sleeve of, of diapers for their baby. Um, you can see in the mother's eyes that that's the world for them. It's not just the dollars that you offer. It's also the, the time, you know, that, that you pay for me to go out and to do outreach. There have been people who are stranded um, because they, they needed a fuel filter for their car. They didn't know how they were going to get it. I was able to take an hour out of my day, $20 out of the deacon's fund, and, and buy a fuel filter, bring it out. And I was blessed to have a dad who's pretty mechanical, and he taught me how to work on cars, and I spent an hour, and we replaced that fuel filter, and we got that guy's van up and running, and, and he felt like he won the lottery because of $20 and an hour's worth of time. That made my day. Last winter, there was a young man who came into the office, and he didn't know what he wanted or what he needed, but his, his face was down. And then I looked at him, and, and, um, and his face was down because it was, it was broken. He was bleeding, and his eyes were swollen shut, and he had busted teeth. And I asked what happened, and he said that he was sleeping under the bridge, and somebody jumped him, and they stole everything he owned. Well, everything he owned fit into a backpack, but they stole everything he owned. And 
and he had an appointment for an emergency, uh, emergency appointment to get his teeth worked on, but he didn't have any way to get there. And so we got him a bus ticket again. It was $20. And I said, they took everything you had? And he said, yeah. And I said, so what you're wearing is all you have? Yeah. And I said, they, they took your blanket? And he said, yeah. And so we were able to go downstairs and, and take one of those quilts that you quilters have made. There was a denim one down there with, with heavy, heavy batting in it. And I handed it to him, and I said, well, this fit. And, you know, he, he was... He was pretty quiet and pretty still, and so I wrapped it around him, and I said, yeah, I think that'll fit. And he, and he started crying. That was love that he received that day, and that's all because of you. You know, you've given it. I'm just handing it out. And it does make a difference. There's a friend that I have who's got uh, mental illness, and, and I, see him, I see him pretty often. I see him most days that I'm working. And... Um, and he was really hurt by church when he was a kid. He talks about that, and, and he's scared to come to church. And we've been talking for two years now about it's okay, and this is a safe place, and this is a good place to be because these are good people here. And last week he came to worship, and he took communion for the first time since I've been here. And, boy, that felt like a win, and that, that's all work that you do. This is risky business that we're about in this church handing over the gifts that we've received. But we do bet on Jesus doing something good with those gifts. And so I want to thank you for supporting that ministry, supporting me and my call. I want to support you and your call as much as I can, and we do it all because we know Jesus holds us together. Let us pray. Lord, you give us big work to do, but you promise that you are always with us. There are some people who don't know. There are some people who forget. Lord, help us understand that they can remember. Every opportunity that you give to, to pay your love forward, help us take it. And with those opportunities, help us pass on the promise that you've given us. We pray these things in, in your name, Lord, our Redeemer and our Rock. Amen.